Hi. Thanks, everyone, for coming to my talk about creating a language server for RPM spec files. I'm Dan Schermark. This is the obligatory introductory slide, but because I already wasted 20 seconds, I'm a software dev at SUSE. Um, the rest is maybe on my homepage, and there's, a, there's going to be a link to the slides. So first, about uh, those who have never heard of a language server. So what the hell is this thing? Um, a language server is a solution to the good old problem. You have created a programming language or a nice tool that's edited in plain text. And then you run into the issue that developers prefer to use their, uh, their tools and refuse to switch to the one editor for which you wrote a plugin. And then they don't use your tool. And now you run into the issue, OK, I would like to make my programming language more popular. So I want to create a plugin for every editor under the sun. And then you realize there's 500 of them. So you, so the uh, what, what you would do in an ideal world, you write a plugin for every single editor. In reality, you'll write it for VS Code, and then I'll cry because I don't use VS Code most of the time. Or you'll create it only for Vim, and then I'll cry too because I use Emacs. So, and you uh, and fortunately, Microsoft actually came up with a solution, and that's called a language server, because in practice. If you want to create tooling for, let's say, a programming language, what you want your editor support is kind of always the same thing, syntax highlighting, go to definitions, refactorings, like renaming stuff, um, find references of your variables, show additional information, show, for instance, function signatures on hover, and, and, and. So there's a lot of very generic stuff that you can find. And so, uh, so Microsoft created a protocol, the language server protocol, which is more or less it's a JSON RPC protocol. So you can now, you, uh, you have a common interface that your editor can talk to. You write a single binary or a script that, uh, that handles all the code smarts. And now you have to write for your language and your editor. Uh, so for your language, you write one language server, and all the editors can talk to it. So that's, very in, in short, the language server. RPM spec files. I guess since you're here, you maybe know them, maybe love them, probably hate them. Um, this is more or less how the, uh, how the whole thing, how a typical RPM spec file looks. So not overly complicated, but with all these funky macros. And unfortunately, RPM spec files are more or less just a build description. Um, the macro language is something custom. It's sort of kind of is inspired by M4, but it's not M4, which is a bummer, because you can't use M4 to parse it. And since RPM has historically been, uh, it's been grown into be something, uh, into be, well, the spec files are made to build RPMs. So when it was built, no one thought about creating something like an AST. So the whole thing is parsed and then executed. Nowadays, you can make RPM preprocess it, but it's really, uh, it's really not intended for, uh, for a tooling consumption. And now you might ask, OK, so and why do you want to exactly put this together? And my problem is I spend a lot of time futzing with RPM spec files. And when I open them with my editor or with any editor I've tried so far, the tooling is relatively simplistic. So I get some nice syntax highlighting, but that's more or less it. The order completion is meh. If I want to know what the value of a macro is, I have to go to the console. And uh, also, that there's, there's a plugin for VS Code, there's an extension for Emacs, there's probably something for VI, but I haven't used VI for a very long time, and maybe for others. And they all can do something and can't do something else. Uh, and I'm spoiled by real IDEs, and I want that for spec files. Um, and so creating a language server would solve this problem for everyone, for every single editor. And so we did that. So the original idea was um, Mathieu uh, started this for the Hack Week at SUSE last year. Uh, myself and Yehan joined in. 
We picked Python for that because Mathieu is contractually obliged to use Python as he's the Python maintainer in OpenSUSE and SUSE. And uh, well, I kind of insisted because I wanted to use PyGLS, which is a language server protocol library, um, mostly because I already used it for another language server. So that saved a whole lot of time. And then came another thing. Okay, so we want to parse spec files. Well, RPM has a Python API. Maybe we can use that. No. Um, unfortunately, so yes, RPM has a Python API, but the Python API is um, interesting. Uh, it's really, you can use it to expand macros. Uh, you can use it to query the RPM database and everything else is not really that easy and there's also not a whole lot of documentation around it. Um, but fortunately, we weren't the first that ran into this problem. Others did already, the packet project, and they created a great spec file module, which hides all the nastinesses of, R well, okay, most of the nastinesses of RPM behind a relatively convenient API. So if you ever need to futz with macros, spec files, or something related to RPM spec files, use this module, it's pretty good. And it works most of the time. It breaks an OpenSUSE because they work mostly on Fedora, but it, it works most of the time. So, which features did we implement? Well, first, auto-completion. Auto-completion would be kind of nice, and especially not just the most common macros, but also really your system macros. So that's uh, the thing that we did first. Then also, Yehan really went, uh, went hard on this one and uh, parsed the whole um, automated, uh, wrote a parser for the uh, RPM documentation um, so that uh, the auto-completion also shows you documentation for the macros that it knows and for the different spec sections. Then another thing that I really would like uh, like to have is um, that you uh, that it would automatically expand macros, because if I look at a spec, there's some macro. What the hell does this macro do? Okay, I go to the console RPM dash capital E macro name. <sighs> That's so convenient. How about the editor just shows me on hover? Jump to definition. That would be also a nice thing to have, right? Um, and then uh, at, at that point, because that somehow uh, somehow we were able to do that quite quickly, um, I implemented breadcrumbs because, well, I still had time left and I was bored. Uh, and nowadays there's also an experimental container mode and maybe the demo guards will, be, uh, will allow us to show that. So let's go for the demo and now I'm going to do the one-handed demo which is probably going to work brilliantly. So this should be VS code, yep. Um, breadcrumbs, what are breadcrumbs? So essentially it allows you, it shows you the different sections of a spec file which you can, where you can jump in between those. So I can, this is really just, this is probably the least useful feature but you can jump between those. As I mentioned, macro expansion. So if you go with the mouse over macro, it should expand it. This is all not very intriguing, but if you, for instance, for some reason want to find out what is the value of this, this, or that, okay, you can find it out. I find that much more convenient than jumping in. Okay, now, if you want to know where the hell does this macro come from, so in VS Code, it should be F12, go to definition, and it will jump into the macro file. Um, now we can do something more interesting. Ah. So that was auto-completion. The CMake macro is very ugly and it's also a non-standard one. So if I jump to definition in here, I land in macros.cmake. As you can see, it's something long, horrible, anyway. Um, so that should be, yeah, we have auto-completion. We also get, if you, if you are in the correct section here, then um, you also get completions of the various uh, of the various preamble sections. So, 
Turns out there's a bug URL tag for RPM spec files. I didn't know that, but it's there. And as I said, the whole thing also works in another editor. So this is, uh, this is now in Emacs. As you can see, hovering works. Um, if I can think, yeah. So this is, um, this is again the breadcrumbs. Um, jump to definition will all work. Okay, cool. Um, we still have something like a few more minutes. So let me attempt to show you the container mode. Um, and that's a solution to, the, uh, to one of the problems, and that is um, if you launch your, uh, so the completion, uh, everything in RPM is dependent on your system. But usually if you're trying to debug a stupid RPM problem, it's not on your current machine, which is running something new, it's on slash 12. I can't solve the slash 12 problem, sorry about that. But if you want to try a different distro, then I've made a container, uh, I've made something that's very experimental, very hacky. Uh, so for instance, huh, it launched, it launched, great. Uh, so in theory, now the server runs on Fedora 40. So this is running in a container. This is not Fedora 40. Um, now I switch the server to Tumbleweed. Um, ignore the error messages. Now the macros expand to the current value at, in Tumbleweed. I ho uh, so I currently have, co uh, so this has a lot of limitations. It's still super buggy and jump to definitions doesn't work because it would jump into files that don't exist. But uh, that's, uh, that more or less allows you to run this language server on a completely different distro. And I hope that will solve someone's problem who wants to debug things on, on a different OS. Okay. Um, quick, a few challenges um, because, well, RPM has a lot of internal state and if you are not very careful and you have multiple spec files open, the macros will start to intermingle, which leads to a very horrible user experience. Uh, you have to also store a lot of stuff in memory because otherwise, um, uh, otherwise RPM, th uh, the, the server thinks you are your file has the state that's on disk, but y your editor shows something different. Um, so f also finding, uh, finding out where your macro is defined re requires a relatively new RPM feature. So if you're running leap or slash or CentOS 9, then this won't work on your system. I'm sorry, and there's nothing I can do about that. Another ugly feature in feature or anti-feature in RPM is that if you mess up your RPM and it doesn't work uh, and, it's, and it has a parsing error, then RPM will just die and the language server will stop working because all its tooling require, uh, is based on RPM being able to parse your spec file and if it's not able to do that, uh, then it doesn't give you anything and the server can essentially do nothing, which is quite a bummer because if you start typing in your spec file, you m usually introduce syntax errors. I hope to be able to solve that someday, but currently it then stops working and I'm sorry about that. Yeah, then editors are weird, so there's a long workaround for VS Code because VS Code doesn't like to complete macros unless you do weird stuff. Uh, yeah, and all your macros are really depending on your OS, which is inconvenient, and that's what the container mode is for. I have a long list of ideas that could be implemented, so if you're very bored or you have an idea, then feel free to contribute. Uh, thank you to a whole ton of people. I probably forgot some. I'm sorry about them. But uh, about that, so if I forgot you, scream at me. I'll add you to the list. Please give it a try. I'm afraid I already ran out of time. So, but if you have questions, then feel free find me around here or create an issue. Thank you a lot. 
Ah, or you can ask now. Does it work on Vim and where can I get it? Uh, it works in Vim. I didn't want to show it because my Vim skills are horrible, but it kind of works in Vim. There's, a, it, there's an issue with, uh, so someone created an issue that some features don't work in Vim, but uh, so if you can give it a try, there's an example config in the repo um, and you can just pip install this project and I think Mathieu actually also packaged it for OpenSUSE and uh, Jakub packaged it for Fedora, but I use the latest Git checkout, so. But it should work with Vim. If it doesn't, please create an issue. Then, if there are no questions, thanks a lot for attending and give it a try.